Hello everyone, I am Dr. Swati. Today I am going to talk about two IVF related procedure that is egg freezing and embryo freezing. Historically, first baby with frozen embryo was born in 1984 and the first baby with frozen egg was born in 1987. So these both are time tested procedure and I will be talking about three aspects. What are you required to do if you go, want to go for oocyte and embryo freezing? Then uh, what are the indications for the procedure? And then finally, I will discuss about the success rate of each procedure. So coming to the first part, if you are considering an oocyte that is egg or embryo freezing, first thing a doctor will ask you to check for your ovarian reserve, which is largely determined by your age, then number of antral follicle in the ovaries and antimalarian hormone level. Then we check for the general body fitness for the aspiration procedure where we check hemoglobin, liver function, kidney function, sugar and screening for viral infections. After that gonadotropin hormone injections are started from the second day of period. Usually injections are given for around 7 to 11 days. After that egg retrieval procedure is planned. The procedure is usually a simple one which takes just 10 to 20 minutes and after procedure we check the maturity and the quality of the egg. A mature egg we label as M2 and if the egg is mature M2, any of our oocyte freezing, egg is frozen same day. If you have embryo freezing, then we inseminate the aspirated egg with husband's semen and after 3 or 5 days an embryo develops, it is frozen. Now we will discuss about oocyte freezing indications first. Historically oocyte freezing was offered for the ladies who were having some cancer and for which they had to undergo surgery or chemotherapy, radiation therapy. All these treatments can damage the ovaries permanently. So the option here is to freeze the eggs before you start the treatment and later on when the cancer treatment is complete, you can go for uh, ICSI and transfer of, of those embryos. Then second indication for oocyte freezing is for the couple who require a genetic testing of the embryo. Usually for genetic testing, we need more embryos. So more embryo means you need more egg. Usually more than 10 egg we require to perform a genetic testing. But there are some ladies who usually get just 4 to 6 egg after one aspiration attempt. So here also we have option of freezing, freezing those 4 to 6 eggs, going for one more cycle of aspiration and later when we get enough number of eggs, go for XC, make the embryo, do the genetic testing on the embryo and transfer the normal ones. Similarly, oocyte freezing is also offered for the couple who are actually for IVF or ICSI but on the day of aspiration we are not getting any semen sample like when husband is not there in the town or there are no sperms in the given semen sample or in azospermic male when we don't get any sperm after TC or micro TC. So in such situation if the couple doesn't want to use any donor sperm the only option is to freeze those eggs and treat the husband for the issues. And later on when husband can give a semen sample or when we can retrieve the sperm that time only perform ICSI with those frozen egg. Similarly there are ladies who wish to electively delay childbearing like who want to pursue higher education or for some career goals or for some personal reason if somebody wants to delay pregnancy then oocyte freezing is the option. We all would have heard that in, in 2014 itself Apple and Facebook offered their female employees to pay for their elective oocyte freezing. So it's no more an experimental treatment. Now coming to the second part which is embryo freezing. Usually when we do an IVF procedure, after the when we retrieve the eggs and embryos are made, usually one or two embryos are transferred. Most of the time, in more than 50% of cases, we get extra embryos. If we try to transfer all embryos, that will risk, increase the risk of multiple pregnancy. So the safer option in such cases is transfer just one or two embryos only and the balanced embryo should be frozen. Similarly, again there are couple who require genetic testing of the embryo, but for a proper detailed genetic testing it needs time and we cannot keep human embryo for more than 3 or 5 days. So again here the option is to freeze the embryo, let the genetic testing complete and after the results are ready we can select the normal embryo and transfer it. Similarly, there are conditions where we cannot do fresh transfer like after when sometimes after stimulation when ovaries are hyper stimulated fresh transfer should not be done. Similarly, when after treatment when estrogen hormone, progesterone hormones are very high or uterus lining is very thin then also fresh transfer should be avoided. Similarly, there are certain situations when uterus has some abnormality where fresh transfer should not be done like ladies who have fibroid, adenomyosis persistent polyp in the endometrial cavity or a hydrothalpins. These things should be corrected before the transfer is done. 
similarly ladies who are obese or overweight they also are advised to lose weight before the actual transfer is done so once we retrieve mature oocyte and embryos develop we freeze both by a process of freezing which is called vitrification there are two ways of freezing one is slow freezing which is a not very successful method other is vitrification which we follow here at craft in vitrification the oocyte and embryo they are ultra rapidly cooled to a temperature to minus 190 degree and stored at same temperature in liquid nitrogen tank once we have frozen the egg and embryos it can be kept frozen for few months till up to even 5 to 10 years there is no harmful effect of prolonged freezing on egg quality or embryo quality and when we wish to do the transfer then frozen egg and embryos are again rewarmed by a process which is called thawing and here in craft when we do thawing of frozen oocytes we get almost 90 to 95% survival and for embryos we get almost 95 to 98% survival which is a very good survival rate so after survival if we get the if we have frozen the oocyte uh, the only drawback is frozen oocyte cannot be used for simple ivf procedure we need to do icsi procedure for the frozen oocyte to get the embryos so once we get the frozen embryo or embryos which are formed after using the frozen oocytes the next procedure is very simple we just have to give some hormone tablets to women to make their endometrium lining ready for the embryo transfer and then transfer procedure is done so now coming to the success rate of the procedure uh, as i told you an embryo and egg can be frozen for any duration and as such there is no difference in implantation rate or pregnancy rate or take home baby rate with a healthy frozen egg versus fresh egg or a fresh embryo versus frozen embryo but still even if you freeze egg and embryo that doesn't always guarantee a healthy pregnancy when we freeze the oocyte for one frozen oocyte we expect around 5 to 15% pregnancy chance and for one frozen embryo we expect around 20 to 30% pregnancy chance so that means if you have more number of egg and embryo you definitely have a higher chance of pregnancy the chance of pregnancy it is largely determined by the number of egg and embryo plus the age of the woman at the time of egg retrieval procedure the younger the age we get better quality embryos and eggs usually what happens for every woman uh, they are all born with the fixed number of oocytes and as the age increases the egg come down in number and quality both after 35 year there is more chance of having a genetic abnormality in the oocyte which can result in a genetically abnormal embryo finally leading to infertility abortion or genetically abnormal baby like down syndrome so the age of the woman at the time of egg retrieval procedure and the number of retrieved egg are very important factors usually to ensure one healthy pregnancy we should collect between 10 to 15 egg for the freezing purpose and the chance of pregnancy is directly dependent on your age suppose you have collected around 9 to 12 egg and you are in your 20s your chance of having a baby is almost 60 to 80% but same number if you have collected when you are in 30s your chance of pregnancy will be around 40% same number if you have collected when you are already reaching 40 year your chance of pregnancy will be just 10 to 20% so that's a important thing uh, the best age to go for oocyte or embryo freezing will be in 20s or early 30s so to sum up this discussion if you're planning for a oocyte or embryo freezing i would recommend you to meet one ivf specialist who will check your ovarian reserve and they will analyze husband semen parameter also and depending upon your whole clinical scenario your age and your expectation they will suggest you whether to go for egg freezing or embryo freezing so whatever your clinical situation is if you want to delay pregnancy for your career or you are already somebody has told you that you are very poor ovarian reserve and you should go for donor oocyte or you are having a genetic abnormality running in family and you want to get treated for that best thing will be consult your specialist as soon as possible and there is always a hope for everybody craft fertility center caring couples